The bearers of the trust of God are made manifest unto the peoples of the earth as the exponents of a new cause and the revealers of a new message, inasmuch as these birds of the celestial throne are all sent down from the heaven of the will of God, and as they all arise to proclaim his irresistible faith, they therefore are regarded as one soul and the same person, for they all drink from the one cup of the love of God, and all partake of the fruit of the same tree of oneness. These manifestations of God have each a twofold station. One is the station of pure abstraction and essential unity. In this respect, if thou callest them all by one name, and dost ascribe to them the same attributes, thou hast not erred from the truth, even as he hath revealed. No distinction do we make between any of his messengers, for they, one and all, summon the people of the earth to acknowledge the unity of God, and herald unto them the Korthar of an infinite grace and bounty. They are all invested with the robe of prophethood, and are honoured with the mantle of glory. Thus hath Muhammad the point of the Quran revealed, I am all the prophets. Likewise he saith, I am the first Adam, Noah, Moses, and Jesus. Similar statements have been made by Imam Ali, sayings such as these, which indicate the essential unity of those exponents of oneness, have also emanated from the channels of God's immortal utterance and the treasuries of the gems of divine knowledge, and have been recorded in the scriptures. These countenances are the recipients of the divine command, and the daysprings of his revelation. This revelation is exalted above the veils of plurality, and the exigencies of number. Thus he saith, our cause is but one, inasmuch as the cause is one and the same. The exponents thereof also must needs be one and the same. Likewise the Imams of the Mohammedan faith, those lamps of certitude have said, Muhammad is our first, Muhammad is our last, Muhammad are all. It is clear and evident to thee that all the prophets are the temples of the cause of God, who have appeared clothed in diverse attire. If thou wilt observe with discriminating eyes, thou wilt behold them all abiding in the same tabernacle, soaring in the same heaven, seated upon the same throne, uttering the same speech, and proclaiming the same faith. Such is the unity of those essences of being, those luminaries of infinite and immeasurable splendor. Wherefore should one of these manifestations of holiness proclaim, saying, I am the return of all the prophets. He verily speaketh the truth. In like manner, in every subsequent revelation, the return of the former revelation is a fact, the truth of which is firmly established. The other station is the station of distinction, and pertaineth to the world of creation, and to the limitations thereof. In this respect, each manifestation of God hath a distinct individuality, a definitely prescribed mission a predestined revelation and specially designated limitations. Each one of them is known by a different name, is characterized by a special attribute, fulfills a definite mission, and is entrusted with a particular revelation.
even as he saith, Some of the apostles we have caused to excel the others. To some God hath spoken, some he hath raised and exalted. And to Jesus, son of Mary, we gave manifest signs, and we strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. It is because of this difference in their station and mission that the words and utterances flowing from these wellsprings of divine knowledge appear to diverge and differ. Otherwise, in the eyes of them that are initiated into the mysteries of divine wisdom, all their utterances are, in reality, but the expressions of one truth. As most of the people have failed to appreciate those stations to which we have referred, they therefore feel perplexed and dismayed at the varying utterances pronounced by manifestations that are essentially one and the same. It hath ever been evident that all these divergences of utterance are attributable to differences of station, thus viewed from the standpoint of their oneness and sublime detachment, the attributes of Godhead, divinity, supreme singleness and inmost essence have been and are applicable to those essences of being, inasmuch as they all abide on the throne of divine revelation and are established upon the seat of divine concealment. Through their appearance, the revelation of God is made manifest, and by their countenance, the beauty of God is revealed. Thus it is that the accents of God himself have been heard uttered by these manifestations of the Divine Being. Viewed in the light of their second station, the station of distinction, differentiation, temporal limitations, characteristics and standards, they manifest absolute servitude, utter destitution and complete self-effacement. Even as he saith, I am the servant of God, I am but a man like you. Were any of the all-embracing manifestations of God to declare, I am God, he verily speaketh the truth, and no doubt attacheth thereto. For it hath been repeatedly demonstrated that through their revelation, their attributes and names, the revelation of God, his names, and his attributes are made manifest in the world. Thus he hath revealed, Those shafts were God's, not thine. And also he saith, In truth, they who plighted fealty unto thee, really plighted that fealty unto God. And were any of them to voice the utterance, I am the messenger of God, he also speaketh the truth, the indubitable truth, even as he saith, Muhammad is not the father of any man among you, but he is the messenger of God. Viewed in this light, they are all but messengers of that ideal king, that unchangeable essence, and were they all to proclaim, I am the seal of the prophets, they verily utter but the truth beyond the faintest shadow of doubt. For they are all but one person, one soul, one spirit, one being, one revelation. They are all the manifestations of the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the seen and the hidden, all of which pertain to him who is the innermost spirit of spirits, and eternal essence of essences. And were they to say, We are the servants of God, this also is a manifest and indisputable fact, for they have been made manifest in the uttermost state of servitude, a servitude the like of which no man can possibly attain. Thus, in moments in which these essences of being 
were deep immersed beneath the oceans of ancient and everlasting holiness, or when they soared to the loftiest summits of divine mysteries, they claimed their utterances to be the voice of divinity, the call of God himself. Were the eye of discernment to be opened, it would recognize that in this very state, they have considered themselves utterly effaced and non-existent in the face of him who is the all-pervading, the incorruptible. Methinks they have regarded themselves as utter nothingness and deemed their mention in that court an act of blasphemy. For the slightest whispering of self within such a court is an evidence of self-assertion and independent existence. In the eyes of them that have attained unto that court, such a suggestion is itself a grievous transgression. How much more grievous would it be where aught else to be mentioned in that presence, where man's heart, his tongue, his mind or his soul to be busied with anyone but the well-beloved, were his eyes to behold any countenance other than his beauty, were his ear to be inclined to any melody but his voice, and were his feet to tread any way but his way. By virtue of this station, they have claimed for themselves the voice of divinity and the like whilst by virtue of their station of messengership they have declared themselves the messengers of God. In every instance they have voiced an utterance that would conform to the requirements of the occasion and have ascribed all these declarations to themselves, declarations ranging from the realm of divine revelation to the realm of creation and from the domain of divinity even unto the domain of earthly existence. Thus it is that whatsoever be their utterance, whether it pertain to the realm of divinity, lordship, prophethood, messengership, guardianship, apostleship or servitude, all is true beyond the shadow of a doubt. Therefore these sayings which we have quoted in support of our arguments, must be attentively considered that the divergent utterance of the manifestations of the unseen and day springs of holiness may cease to agitate the soul and perplex the mind. And that was gleanings from the writings of Baha'u'llah, number 22.